I want to read you some quotes from the cult of quantum. By the way, I'm also going to quote you some of the brightest minds in current uh, theoretical physics and quantum theory and just show you how stupid and brain dead these demented a-holes really are. Now, I'm going to be quoting these people directly with no subterfuge. And if you have a brain to see how stupid they are, congratulations. If you agree with them, woe unto you. Um, so, by the way, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a quote from uh, Leonard Susskind. Mm, okay, now this is a professor of theoretical physics and the priest of quantum mechanics. Him right alongside uh, a Tricky Dick, or as I call it, Richard Feynman, are the, uh, yeah, the leaders. Uh, now, uh, Feynman's dead now. Now, here's Leonard Susskind. When common sense and intuition failed, we the insane relativist is what he's meaning, had to create a new form of intuition based upon abstract mathematics. He means unreal nonsense. When common sense fails, in other words, they had to use something other than common sense to create this crap. When common sense fails, we must create uncommon sense. This is a direct quote from this moron. Isn't that fascinating? Now, Niels Bohr, well, he's highly lauded as a genius. Uh, let's see, quantum insanity. This is a quote from Niels Bohr. Everything which we call real must be made up of things which cannot be real. Now, that is a highly acclaimed founder of quantum mechanics who basically said everything that we think is real is made up of imaginary shit like unicorns and leprechauns. That's basically what he said. Now, this quote's uh, Richard Feynman, or I call him Tricky Dicky. He's dead now. This guy is a, uh, a serious religious figurehead, in the, and it is a religion. Quantum is. This is a quote from Richard Feynman. The more you see how strange nature behaves, it's only strange if you're a moron and you can't decipher Mother Nature, uh, the harder it is for us to make a model that explains even how the most simplest of phenomena, like magnetism, works. Theoretical physics has given up on this pursuit. He basically said this stuff is too complicated for us to figure out. We've, for, we've given up on it. Um, let me quote you Nikola Tesla on these morons. Now, Nikola Tesla lived before Feynman, but this same sort of uh, sick Einsteinian atomistic relativism existed in the uh, days of uh, Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla says, All literature on this subject, i.e. relativity and curved space-time, a la the moron Einstein, is futile and destined to oblivion. By the way, when I call Einstein a moron, what I'm actually doing is quoting Nikola Tesla. Nikola Tesla also called Einstein a fuzzy-haired crackpot. Yeah. <laughs> Someone else once said, said, you can always recognize a relativist. They will either ask you for your credentials or offer uh, their credentials to you without uh, you asking for or about them. Um, here's Walter Russell on uh, the cult of quantum. Nothing is more fantastical and a travesty of how nature works than is quantum theory. Its very basis has no relationship at all to reality. Those are pretty harsh words. Here's Nikola Tesla again. Scientists today think rather deeply rather than clearly. One must be sane as opposed to insane. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can think deeply and be quite insane. Today, scientists have substituted mathematics for experimentation, and they wander through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no basis in reality. Wow, holy shit. Nikola Tesla really nailed modern science on the head right there. Now, relativity is based upon two things, two fundamental flaws which sprang forth between the empty head of Einstein, uh, Niel Bohr, um, and who else? Niels Bohr and somebody else? I forget the third person. And that is the belief that uh, everything is particles and also the reification of nothing, space, because Nikola Tesla said space has no properties, space is nothing. The reification of space as something that does things and interacts with other things. This notion, we, we've been brought up and spoon-fed this bullshit in science fiction. Curved space-time, we've warped space-time, we've bent space-time, we have a space-time curvature. 
What the hell? That's like saying you're bending so, unicorns. Yeah, the two major fallacies of uh, quantum mechanics and relativity is the reification of two things that don't exist. Everything is fields, and fields are not particles, but these people only believe in particles. That's why I call it the cult of bumping particles. The second thing they do is they reify space as something that does stuff. Because the moron, Einstein, was perpetually referring to curved space-time. Space cannot be curved. Uh, Nikola Tesla, who is, of course, infinitely more intelligent than Einstein, you know, he poo-pooed this notion as absolute uh, nonsense. He called this sort of thinking futile and destined to oblivion. Unquote, Nikola Tesla. See, this is Nikola Tesla's really kind words of saying that relativity and quantum mechanics is bullshit. Okay? If I didn't make that perfectly clear for you. Now... <clears throat> Let's take a field, for example, like a magnetic field. Well, what's a magnetic field made out of? Well, let's not define a field yet. I'll have to save that for future videos. Really, a field in very simple terms is a uh, ether perturbation or inertia perturbation. It's either circular, it's transverse, or it's longitudinal. Technically, it's toroidal or longitudinal. Uh, circular is just a subsection of toroidal, so it's either toroidal or longitudinal, technically speaking, if you want to get down to the nitty-gritty. These people in quantum mechanics, and these are their own words. Most people have never heard of like virtual, far, uh, virtual particles and virtual photons, but this is the shit these idiots actually believe and write about in their own books. QED, Strange Theory of Light and Matter by Richard Feynman. This guy is like... The cult figurehead and Santa Claus, the alpha and omega of quantum mechanics. He's dead now, thank God. Um, this is the crap that they actually believe. Like, you know, what is a field? Like, it's a magnetic field. Well, it's virtual photons. This, this is the shit that they actually say. Well, okay, okay, let's define a virtual photon. By the way, a virtual particle or virtual photon is not the output of any experiment ever done in history, nor would it ever be. It's just like saying... You know, we got we did an experiment. And we got unicorns. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah, it's unicorns. We got, we did another experiment. And we got little leprechauns. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so here we have the definition of a virtual particle. A virtual particle is an abstraction which facilitates in calculations and understanding. The term is very vague and loosely defined. They never appear as the inputs or outputs of experiments. Their existence is questionable at best. However, they are very useful in rendering concepts and making equations balance out. In other words, when a mathematician, and math never explains anything or defines anything, it only quantifies things that can be quantified. Some things cannot be quantified, like a field, and everything is fields. You can't quantify a field. Why the fuck can't you quantify a field? Because a field has no quantity. Isn't that inter interesting? You ever put two and two together and, and see the shit that I'm actually saying right now? Everything is fields, but a field has no quantity. Math only deals in quantity. Crap you can count. One, two, three, four, five. Subdivision, square root. That's what I can do. You cannot do math about something that has no quantity. You can quantize the field only in the four Maxwellian field equations, for example, with a vector with an effect over a period of time, and then you can quantize a field. A field by itself has never been defined. Let's say this is a field. This, is, as a field, has never been defined. But this, change over effect with x momentum, with x uh, uh, force uh, measured in joules, that can be quantized. In other words, we know nothing about a field. Science has never defined a field in itself, of itself, by itself. But they can quantify it and do math about a change over a vector with a given result. But that still never defines a field. What you're doing is defining attributional effects with vector and time variance and change. So, make equations balance out. So, mathematicians, yeah. So, they invented something to explain fields because to them everything is space and time, which are not things. Time is a concept. Space doesn't exist. Space is no different than a shadow. A shadow is a privation of light. So what is space? Space is actually the posterior attribute of the loss of inertia or the posterior attribute of the divergence of a uh, magnetic field which creates a bubble which we would define at bubble as space. It becomes a toroid. The conjugate 
geometry, a force of motion, inertia, and acceleration, which is a hyperboloid and a torus together. Together, those define a sphere. Space and counter space, right? Electromagnetic induction. Well, you can really quantize a lot of stuff. Math is about counting things, not defining things. So, let me read uh, something else about what they think a field is. In physics, a field is a physical quantity. Is it? A field has no physical quantity. It's not even quantitative, nor is it physical, so that's bullshit. These are, these are their own definitions. Typically, a number or a tensor. You, you're going to give a number to something that has no quantity? How are you going to do that? They're only giving a number to a field in the sense of change over a period of time. You cannot quantify something that has no quantity. You know, even a child can understand that crap. But, you know, a tenured professor does not, apparently. Whew, wow. Here's their own words, too. Um, the sloppy use of the language to which physics are prone makes it lead to confusion in the student as to whether a field here means region or a single point force vector within a given region or a set of point force vectors within a given region of all the point force vectors. Blah, 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 blah. Forces have ranges and theoretically are infinite. Uh, quantum theory of fields, what are the fields possess momentum energy? See, here we go. The fact that electromagnetic field can possess momentum and energy makes it very real. Now, real would be something that has quantity. This is real. It has quantity, you know, real. A field has no quantity. A field can only be given quantity in the case of energy and momentum when you actually quantify it over time with a vector. A field in and of itself has no reality. It means it is completely unreal. So if everything is a field and fields have no particles and fields are not particles and they also have no quantity, that means everything is unreal. Everything that we think is real is technically unreal. Oh my God, we've stepped into the realm of metaphysics. Which is why the Greeks were so interested in metaphysics. They understood that physics were one thing, metaphysics were another. They're just two sides of the same coin. Modern scientists are dumbasses. They think, well, this is the field of physics, and over here we got this occult shit and, you know, this crazy shit in metaphysics. You know, we got the real stuff over here, a science and tenure professors, and we got, like, uh, Madame Tussauds and her crystal ball and metaphysics. Of it. Yeah, pretty sure the ancient Greeks and Pythagoreans, Plato, Aristotle... Uh, Pythagoras, they were smarter than modern scientists by leaps and bounds. They understood that metaphysics and physics were one and the same damn thing. Just uh, different sides of the same damn coin. A particle makes a field, and a field makes another particle in the field. If you don't understand how stupid these assholes are, then you're missing something. Because they are literally that stupid. Nikola Tesla was right. I mean, th this sort of stuff is crap. You know who James Clerk Maxwell is? People think, well, T Tesla was the godfather of electricity. No, really, James Clerk Maxwell was. More so than Tesla was. Even Tesla would agree to that if they'd been con concurrent creatures. Here's James Clerk Maxwell. James Clerk Maxwell. From his book, Treaties on Electricity and Magnetism, the medium of propagation, the ether, must exist. The medium must be prominent throughout our investigations. Now, this guy, the equations that he writes are absolutely astoundingly long. Some of them are countless pages long. James Kirk Maxwell was a genius. You don't know who James Kirk Maxwell is, you're not too smart. All the greats of electrical theory, the people that actually gave you the modern world, by today's standards of uh, theoretical physics and quantum mechanics and the other assholes that we, you know, put in place as tenure professors, they would have referred to these people as like spiritualists and metaphysicians because they all believed in the ether. Uh, Steinmetz, uh, Charles Prody Steinmetz, James Clerk Maxwell, Nikola Tesla, Oliver Heaviside, these are the people that gave you the modern electrical world, not assholes like Niels Bohr, Einstein, and Richard Feynman. Those people were butt-scratching dumbasses. I mean, this is the crap that these people wrote. I mean, wh wh what else can you say about me? See, uh, common. when common sense fails, we must come up with um, uncommon sense. Oh, really? Well, that sounds like a really profound statement right there. 
Everything which we think is real cannot be really real. Richard Feynman. The more strange we see how nature is, the more impossible we are to understand how it works. Theoretical physics has given up on their pursuit of explaining this. These people are literally the ones that created unicorns and leprechauns. Oh, excuse me, virtual particles and photons, which are not the inputs or outputs of any experiment ever done to explain what exists around a magnet. When we talk about a magnetic field, they literally quantized it because they don't believe in things that have no quantity. If it doesn't have quantity, it doesn't exist at all. It can't be. You know, there's just no chance. So they had to quantize. What's going on between... These are their own words. What's going on between the two poles of a magnet? Uh, virtual photons. Really? You just said leprechauns and unicorns are what's going on between two poles of a magnet. Yes, virtual photons. Yes, that's what's going on. Virtual photons. These are people that today are lauded as geniuses and experts in theoretical physics and understanding of cosmic mechanics. The, the society is F-U-C-T. Yeah, I said F-U-C-T. People are so dumb. You see, when we start making uh, heroes out of dumbasses like that, and this is the sort of crap that they produce, you know humanity is screwed. Well, no, we got TV sets and computers and Apple watches. We're such an advanced society. No, we're not. That's technology. Technology has nothing to do with uh, wisdom or comprehension of uh, Mother Nature. Wow. The more you go down this rabbit hole, the more you'll understand how stupid these people are. And even more stupid than them are the people that believe that these people know what the hell they're talking about. It's absolutely amazing. It's astounding, the stupidity. It's just mind-bogglingly dumb. Stupid people eat this crap up. I mean, it's, that's what they make science fiction out of. Star Trek, Star Wars. Well, we've curved space-time! We've got a tachyon pulse. We've got gravitons. It's like, it, it shove that particle fantasy atomistic crap right up your dark bunghole. What I want to know is what's going on the between these two, bits, these two bits of metal. The repel each other. And, well, then what does, that, but what does that mean? Or why are they doing that? Or how are they doing it? Uh, you're asking. I, I, I must say, I think that's a perfectly reasonable question. Of course, to it's ask. a reason. It's an excellent question. Okay. Uh, the, but the problem that you're asking, you see, when you ask why something happens, how does a person answer why something happens? For example, Aunt Minnie is in a hospital. Why? Because she slipped. She went out and she slipped on the ice and broke her hip. That satisfies it, people. It satisfies, but it wouldn't satisfy someone who came from another planet and knew nothing about things. You first, you don't understand why, when you break your hip, do you go to the hospital? If, for example, you could go, well, why did she slip on the ice? Well, ice is slippery. Everybody knows that, no problem. But you ask, why is ice slippery? That's kind of curious. Ice is extremely slippery. It's very interesting. We could even go further and say, why did she fall down when she slipped? That has to do with gravity. It involves in all the planets and everything else. Never mind. It goes on and on. For example, why two magnets repel? There are many different levels. It depends on whether you're a student of physics or an ordinary person who doesn't know anything or not. If you're somebody who doesn't know anything at all about it, all I can say is that there's a magnetic force that makes them repel.